good afternoon uh, so we have discussed uh, data and information in the previous two classes so we defined both terms uh, and also we got some examples for under, understand uh, understanding uh, these two words right so i took enough time for explaining usually we don't uh, we don't spend such time right um, such amount of time for discussing data and information but i have taken uh, more than which uh, we needed right so i hope that you all uh, have some ideas about data and information so more importantly you must have the skill to identify something as data or information for example if something is given in exam you must be able to identify such that uh, such thing as a data or information right so you have to check whether they are processed or not at the same time check whether they are meaningful or meaningless right if they are processed definitely they are information and also if they have meaning definitely uh, they are information right because data are meaningless and also they are unprocessed things okay right so before i take uh, one or two other examples because uh, i need some other example to to give uh, a, a complete idea or complete picture about these two things right so i need uh, one or two examples before that uh, let me explain uh, or let me dis uh, let, let's discuss the differences between the term data and information because we all understood these two terms data and information so we have to discuss have we discussed the differences between data and information earlier did i did i explain those differences between uh, these two terms data and information have we discussed yes sir okay so uh, okay okay let's take the first difference so tell me one difference between data and information meaningless and meaningful yes, that may be uh, that may be one uh, data uh, are meaningless information is meaningful but uh, yes that is the different uh, difference that can be accepted but uh, apart from this point right uh, meaningless and meaningful you know a point or one thing has uh, has to be given importance that may be the biggest difference between the data and information so try uh, giving the priority for that point and then only you can take uh, the meaningful or meaningless so what could be the important difference between data and information process data and unprocessed things yes right data are raw materials which means uh, they are unprocessed things information is uh processed data right so first one data unprocessed information is processed data that is the first difference second data are meaningless but information is meaningful can anyone give me another difference third one is there any other differences data are not fulfill they are fulfill the needs uh, okay. information right uh, okay okay the needs. you are correct right uh, your answer is correct but try try modifying that answer try to give that in in a different manner because fulfilling the need is okay right that is okay but uh, when it comes to data and information we use a different terminology uh, for describe uh, describing such thing so can anyone modify uh, her answer data cannot be used for making decisions but uh, information can be used for making decisions yes. right good so that may be the right term to be used right data uh, cannot be used for decision making right you cannot use the data for making decisions but information can right so information can be used for making decisions but data cannot be even uh, fulfilling the needs also correct but uh, right since this term has uh very close the meaning i i i uh, i mean explain that one i took it okay so these are the three differences between three major differences between data and information there may be some other differences too right uh, but these are more than enough okay right right uh, so these are the differences remember them uh, today i try to send those uh, soft copies or those tutorials you can uh, you can refer that later right 
So before we go to the next one, or before we move to the next, uh, uh, I mean, next area or next chapter, let's take one or two other examples for having uh, some other ideas, right? Uh, a clear idea, right? Uh, so uh, you know your progress report, right? So at the end of every term, you will be given uh, a progress report from your, by your school, right? Uh, what about that progress report? Is it data or information? Information. Others, is it information, your progress report? Yes, the sir. progress report you obtain from school, is it a data or information? information right that progress uh, that progress report is an information because look the progress report is uh, is uh, i mean uh, given to you after collecting some data and process them so to produce a progress report you need you need some data so the marks of your subjects right if you if you follow nine subjects all these marks should be collected definitely they are data Right. So once they are collected, you know, uh, there should be some processes uh, taken place, right? Like uh, adding those marks, maybe finding the average, maybe ranking. So after doing such things, your report book shows the rank, right? First rank or second rank or third rank. That, push, that should be meaningful, a uh, meaningful fact, right? So showing that as first, first rank in the class should be a meaningful sentence. So that is information. But sometimes if, uh, if, if your report doesn't show rank or other things, definitely that is just a data. You cannot say that it has um, meaning, right? So that should, be an, uh, that should be a data. But I'm talking about a standard report that you obtain from your school, right? Having marks and uh, maybe total average and finally the rank. That should be an information, okay? So your marks are not uh, information, they are just data. Right, uh, let me take one more thing. Mm. You know the weather report, right? So the weather report is very, very important for each and every individual, right? We, we often check the weather report to, to decide our day, right? So weather report is important. So what about the weather report? Is it data or information? Quickly respond, weather report, is it data or information? Sir, information. Right, why, 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 uh, why it is taken as information? What's the reason? So if it, is, if it is information, take a look at, okay, you are right, that is information. Weather report is information. How or why that report is produced after collecting so much uh, of, I mean, uh, environmental parameters, right? They, they collect so many data, right? right? They collect the, I mean, uh, rainfall or the wind speed, right? So they, they collect so many things. Sometimes if something happens as earthquake, so they, they more, I mean, measure the earthquake. So based on those uh, data, you know, prediction is there, right? I mean, they process them and produce weather report. Then only they can predict whatever they, they I mean, they show, right? Uh, like uh, a storm or maybe a tsunami or whatever, right? So weather report should be an information. Okay, so I hope that you have some idea now. So uh, weather report is very meaningful because uh, data have been processed to produce such thing. Okay, right. Right, so when we, talk, when we talk about data and information, we should know some other things too. See, the basic details about anything, right? I repeat it, a basic facts about any, any, anything. It may be the basic facts about people. It may be the basic facts about uh, places. It may be the basic facts about your school. So it may be any, anything, but they are definitely data right? Basic details about a person or people or maybe organization. So everything should be taken as data. See, my name is a data. 
he don't don't i mean don't drag such things into consideration like whether they have meaningful or whether they have been processed or not such don't drag such things right so generally these be basic details must be data my name is is just a data maybe my address is a data even my date of birth is a data age is a data so these are my details right basic facts about me so definitely these are data so uh, similarly the basic facts about an organization maybe its name right its uh, right uh, address so where it was found so when it is it was found so these things can be uh, definitely data because these are basic things about some uh, some people or some organization okay so you need to think in a different dimension to decide such things okay so that's why i have taken that but i i hope uh, uh, that uh, your book states that nic number right nic number uh, is an information right uh, according to your book nic number uh, national identity card number is one of the information uh, see if if it is our old nic number uh, the first two digits represent uh, the the year uh, of born right so if if it is 90 if someone's nic starts with 90 that means he was or she was born on 1990 right Maybe the third digit shows whether uh, that person is male or female, right? If it is in between zero to four, it's male, uh, right? Five to nine, female. So look here, that NIC number seems to be a number, just a number. It, it seems that it doesn't have a meaning, but if you closer look at that, you can obtain some uh, meaning there, right? So as I mentioned earlier, the first two digits, uh, the year of born, right? The third digit shows whether that person is male or female. So now we can argue that that it particularly uh, NIC is meaningful uh, number. So we can check that as information too. Okay. So as I as I already said, you know, data and information is always complex. Right, so it is too difficult to, I mean, differentiate something as data or information. Some some facts can be easily identified whether they are data or information, but some some uh, are very tough uh, to decide whether they are in, uh, they are information or data. Okay, but remember, NIC can be taken as information too. Even people can argue that it is data because it's about a person, so they may say that it is an information. Sorry, it is a data. But uh, there is an argument too, right? We can argue that it is an information, okay? Right, so these are the things to be discussed about data information. So I have taken more than a couple of classes, right? So hope everyone understands everything, right? Okay, so hereafter, uh, we will take another, another topic or another area, which also has some sort of relationship with, with data and information, right? So let's take that one system. Look, system. Uh, this this area seems to be little big, but uh, for grade ten we have only small introduction. So we should understand the term system first, and also we should be able to uh, take some examples. Right? These are enough for you. But uh, in grade 11, you will, uh, you will study a complete unit. There is a complete unit allocated for this one in grade 11. So you can gain more idea and more knowledge in grade 11. But now you need a, a I mean, very brief foundation, right? But that foundation must be laid, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, a, in a perfect manner, right? So let me explain. Look, the term system uh, is not a new term for you because uh, sometimes in our day-to-day -day conversation also we use the word system without understanding the meaning properly everyone uh, i mean uses that word right system so even you might have heard that people uh, use such words in dialogue like uh, uh, turn turn on the computer system or maybe uh, they may say that uh, 
let's withdraw some money from ATM system. So, so they do such dialogues in our day-to-day -day life, right? Not all the people, but some people uh, use such words, system. But without knowing the real meaning, they use it. Okay, let's define the term system first. I tell you one thing here. In ICT, don't try to memorize anything uh, from the beginning, right? It may be any unit, it may be simple or hard or whatever. Don't try uh, for memorizing, right? Try understanding. Even when it comes to data and information, no one expects uh, to give the same definition which is given in the book or which is, uh, which, uh, is given by me, right? So all you need to, I mean, uh, remember is those points, right? Those important things must be included. It's up to you to decide or create your own definition, right? But try keeping those terms and uh, the, the major features inside. So similarly, if it is system, definitely I will give a definition. So don't copy that, don't memorize that. In that particular definition, there should be a fact, right? So just grab that fact, right? Just, I mean, uh, catch the fa fact. So if you catch it carefully, definitely you never forget that. Right, so you can elaborate that particular fact in your own words, in your own language, right? Okay, look here. So I'm not going to give the definition directly, but uh, let's, uh, let's see, I will I mean, explain that in a different way. See, if you think that uh, some object as a system, so assume I, I point something as a system, so if I think that it is a system, definitely it must have three important things. Okay, so see there is a machine or something, right? So I used to call that as a system. So if I used to call that as a system, definitely that machine should have three important things or should fulfill three important things. Okay, so a system should have three things. So first of all, so if it is a system, it must be able to fulfill a task. It must be able to perform a task. That must be important. So in my, in my case, if I am pointing a machine as a system, definitely that, that machine has the ability to perform a task. That is important, right? Performing task. After writing these important things, we can uh, I mean, make our own definition, right? So wait until I take it. Okay, so first one, uh, if it is a system, it must uh, have the ability to perform a task, particular job task. In order to perform that particular task, that system must have parts inside, which we call components, okay? So again, in my case, if I mention that as a system, yes, they, it must have the ability to perform a task. At the same time, that must have components inside, right? We uh, take them as parts. So that is the second one, having components. Right? Yes, having those components is, is very, very crucial. At the same time, those components must work together, right? If it is a system, these components which are in the particular system must work together. They cannot uh, work alone, right? They, one depends on the other. So that's the meaning of working together. So these components must work together. Right? So if you combine these three things in your definition, that would be okay. Right? So no one expects any other uh, different, I mean, uh, definitions. Try including these three points in your definition. So you should know how to make the definition by combining these two. Okay? So I take those three points again. If it is a system, it must perform a task that must have components inside and also these components must work together. So how to, how to, I mean, how to compose that as, as a definition? Can anyone make this as a, as a definition? Can anyone 
join this i mean points in 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 in, a, in an appropriate way and make that as a definition you don't need to copy your i mean books definition right uh, take that or put it in in one one side we we need to focus on here so anyone can you can you define uh, the word system by combining these three points is a integrated is a collection of integrated components that must work together to fulfill a particular task or a goal okay right look so if it is a system yes it must perform a task it must have components and it must sorry those components work together so how to how to combine them a system uh is a system a system is a is a collection of components because as i said earlier there may be so many components not one component right it would be easy if i give one example wait until i take the first example right so a system is a collection of components which work together to perform a task so very simple definition i repeat it a system is a collection of components or even you can say combination of components right collection of components which work together to perform a task yes sometimes you can say that it is for achieving a goal right sometimes we can say achieving a goal or performing task almost similar right almost similar so that is system so never ever memorize right so try understanding these three points right this must be in your mind when we take some examples right okay let me take the first example to understand this one Uh, then only you can easily compare the definition with the example uh, to get ideas right so let me take a very simple example right we don't need to go for big examples just take a simple example uh, to understand even look here uh, okay take a look at your mobile phone a mobile phone is a system is 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 an example for system how or why it it matches so it suits to these three look here a mobile phone can perform a task making a call is a task uh sending text messages to the others is a task listening to music in a mobile phone is a task browsing i mean uh, websites task even participating in online classes in your mobile phone task look here in order to uh, perform a particular task it may be anything right task your phone must have components as we all know a mobile phone has so many components right so there are some components which are visible there are some components which are kept inside of your mobile phone as we know battery is there uh, there is a small uh, cpu or processor there a random access memory there if you don't know these words no right don't worry we will study them later so even you have a display there right uh, as as the as the main main uh, input so display is there so you have so many components but not all these components must work together you can imagine right so if if you want to make a call you know there should be several components in your phone uh, work together so definitely uh that is uh that that matches to last point right they must work together okay let's take one more example another example so let's take a bicycle you know bicycle is too simple right so if it is bicycle that bicycle has uh, uh has components right you know you know there is a wheel there is a pedal handle right so we have so many uh, parts there all these parts all these components must work together right they are connected they every every component or every part depends on the other you can't say that the wheel is alone enough for riding right so every everything depends on the other so they working as a unit and you can achieve a task there right i riding uh, to the bicycle or riding towards one destination that is task so bicycle definitely system even look 
as human beings we are systems every human being is a system because we have components right the parts of the body they all of these are components parts not all these components must work together to to perform a task look here i am talking i am explaining i'm teaching this is a task right i am performing a particular task i am doing this because the parts in my body are working together i can't say that only one part is is working uh, at at this moment right there are so many parts working together as a unit then only i can i, I can speak or i can uh, teach that is system have you got so we have so many systems in the, in in our environment but uh, later i will take some other systems but i have taken this example only for explaining the definition right so now everyone should understand the definition clearly don't memorize that understand such things okay so if it is a system definitely it must have these three things it should fulfill a task right it must have components and all these components must work together right okay uh, look uh, have a look at this one Okay, so have a look at this. Right, see, you have uh, you have a road construction machine uh, in two pictures, right? This is also one of the road construction machine, right? This is also a machine. Figure two point two, two point one, both show the same idea. But here, uh, as you can see, the parts are disconnected. right they are not connected in figure 2.1 the parts of the road construction machine are disconnected but the 2.2 figure shows the typical road construction machine where the parts are joined right they are connected together so which one can be taken as system both or figure 2.1 or 2.2 what about your idea what is the system here Two point two. Two point two. So, what about two point one? Two point two. What about two point two? Uh, sorry, two point one can't be considered as a system. So, why it is wrong? They can't fulfill a task. Yes, here the parts are disconnected, right? So, but not both are exactly same, right? This this machine also has all the required parts. This also has all the parts. but the thing is here parts are not connected together so since parts are not connected you know this never uh, performs any task it cannot do anything so definitely this can't be a system but when they are connected uh, it becomes as a system okay it's a very simple idea behind so you you can't say that it is a system because it, it has parts right having parts is important at the same time those parts must be working together so if if they are working together definitely they must be connected okay right all right so let's i have i have taken one or two example for introducing the word system so i repeat I repeat the definition again system is a combination of components which work together to perform a task okay right Look. 
if it is a system right if it is a system uh, there should be three important things which we call elements elements of a system right every system has three important things they are elements right it may be a small system or big system definitely you can find the three elements okay i i name them first later we will discuss the first one is called inputs right so first one inputs second process third output okay so we can find these three elements in every system so you know these words directly tell the meaning there there is no more explanation is needed but i i take some time to explain these three things with the help of some example because there may be some students who who have some problems in understanding but definitely by looking at these three words you can understand the those facts right look so okay let's take uh, one example right i take some simple example uh, to understand uh, starting from very simple examples look so i hope you have experiences in uh, working with atm machine right automated teller machine right so everyone has experience uh, uh, experience uh, with atm uh, some of you have i mean direct experience right uh, first hand experiences some of you know them right doesn't matter so definitely atm is a system there is no uh, doubt at all atm is a system because to fulfill a task atm has components which work together see uh, withdrawing the money from atm that is a task to do that task parts in atm work together uh, even though we don't know the exact parts which which are kept inside definitely we can we can understand right because there should be parts because atm looks like a computer so definitely parts inside okay uh, i'm 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 not going to i mean justify uh, whether it is a, it is, is a system or not that is not the point but let's understand these three things inputs uh, process and output look so in atm right in atm uh, suppose when you want to withdraw some money right from the from the atm you need to give some some details or something to the atm right so first of all okay i i don't want to take them just want to take them from you right so tell me what are the things need to be given uh to the atm the things which are need to be given to the atm should be called inputs right the the things or details or whatever we give to the atm must be taken as inputs so tell me in in this case withdrawing the money we are going to withdraw uh, some money so what about the inputs can anyone give me one input atm card atm card all, all right ATM so A atm card right atm card uh, is it the only only input that you insert or is there any other inputs yeah, atm pin number pin number yes look after inserting first of all we need to insert the card first okay that is first input okay let me write that atm card that is first input so once the card is inserted you know it asks a secret number which we call pin personal identification number uh, because uh, to, to to maintain the uh, secrecy so they expect that particular secret number everyone has a secret number that is pin so we need to enter the pin into the system so that is also one thing which i enter to the system so definitely that is also input right so entering pin no pin personal identification number that is another input is there is there any other input that you insert amount of money yes the amount of money that you want to withdraw 
that is important right so you need to you need to type or you need to select so selecting or typing whatever that is see in in some cases we have to type the amount in some cases there are options available you can select that so don't think that selecting the option is not input that is also input whatever you give to the system must be input it may be typing it may be clicking it may be tapping whatever so definitely that is also uh, an input right uh, amount amount of withdrawal all right so these are, there may be more than these three inputs but for me these are enough right so don't think that there are some other uh, inputs too okay there may be many but for me this are enough okay right so atm machine uh, will have to do some processes right uh, look after inserting the card right so once the card is inserted the atm asks to enter the pin okay so assume that pin has been entered i have typed the pin so tell me what happens once the pin is entered verify the pin yes once a pin is entered that atm has to verify that has to check whether that pin is the right pin for the cart that is the verification process because if 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 it doesn't happen you know in anyone can take the money so that that must be very important that has to be done by the atm so verification of that particular pin or verifying the pin so what is it verifying the pin or how to call that or how to take that what is it verifying the pin number what's the common term uh, which we can uh, use to describe that what is it it is a uh, process process have you understood right the inputs are given uh, from the outside part of the system right people give the input but once inputs are taken the process must be taken place inside of the system right so one uh, process is verification or verify the pin verify pin right all right so after verifying the pin uh, you know as we discussed earlier we have to type the amount that you withdraw so see i want to withdraw 10000 rupees from the atm so once i type 10000 you know atm never gives 10000 directly because atm has the responsibility to check whether my account has a sufficient balance right the account balance is important so once the the amount of withdrawal is entered by a user atm has to check whether the requested amount is in the balance so is in the account right so that is another process okay so second process uh, verify the balance or something or checking the balance checking uh, the account balance okay that is also one of the uh, uh, processes okay yes there may be may more than these two but i have given two well known processes right so as the result of these processes we will be able to get some output so output means that system is a uh, system gives something back to us we are the people who gave something to the system processes ha uh, happened inside of the system and system will give something back to us right so in this case tell me one output cash taking money okay. right uh, the Hi. output that one cash or money or something right so that is important first one uh, even you know that uh, we can have a receipt from the atm right so that shows some of the details about our account balance and other things so that is also okay receipt even the atm screen shows some information about uh, the current status of the account right after taking the money after withdrawing the money you can uh, see some of the information on the on the screen that screen itself shows right rather than uh, showing them in the on the receipt it also shows something on the 
screen even that is also uh, one of the outputs okay so so definitely it is a system because it has input process output right as i uh, said earlier if you have doubts in any point ask me right so you can ask at that particular point of time then only i can clarify okay so hope you all understood this one in atm inputs atm card pin the amount of uh, withdrawal processes verifying the pin number and also checking uh, the account balance the output uh, money received the details which are displayed on the screen right all of them my information right so let's take another example so that is also well known uh, very family example to you uh, fingerprint reader my second example right fingerprint reader so this fingerprint reader is a, is a is a common sight in every institutions now uh, even every schools uh, have every school has this fingerprint reader nowadays you know fingerprint reader can be used for multiple purposes uh, it can be used for tracking down the criminals so the security officers police may use such things for uh, tracking down the criminals but in uh, in organizations uh, it is very useful for taking attendance so in this example or in this case i am taking this fingerprint reader uh, to to take the attendance in an organization right forget about that uh, the uh, sorry forget about that reader uh, used by the military people right that is also possible we can argue but uh, it would be easy if i take Uh, a fingerprint reader used in a school or in any other organization okay right so this is uh, the device so this is the system so it is a system because it can perform a task what is the task behind uh, taking attendance right taking attendance that is the task in order to perform that task some parts in the uh, fingerprint reader work together even though we know we don't know them definitely we can understand that that particular fingerprint reader machine definitely has something inside right they work together then only attendance uh, can be registered okay right so now we take the inputs process and output okay first of all take the inputs tell me what about the inputs You you know the function, right? So tell me what is the what's the input? Huh? Putting finger fingerprint. Yes, simply fingerprints, right? So we don't need to, uh, I mean, uh, show them as a sentence like uh, scanning the fingerprint or uh, keeping the finger on the fingerprint reader or something. Just fingerprint. That is enough. You need to generally that that input must be a noun, right? Because that is the thing to be taken from the outside world. so in my previous example see that atm card that pin everything is 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 not a verb right it it may be a noun so here also it is not good to say that as uh, i mean putting the fingerprint or placing the finger so it is fingerprint that's enough right so that is the only one input fingerprint right so we don't need to input uh, many many things in fingerprint reader it is enough right uh, fingerprint is enough right after taking the fingerprint this reader or fingerprint reader must do some processes right i tell you what so you know in fingerprint reader uh, if it is if it is established or if it is set up in an organization like a school so i assume a fingerprint reader is uh is can is is set up in a school so uh it is set up in a school for taking the attendance of the staff so definitely at the time when the fingerprint reader is set up in the school uh at the initial time 
the fingerprints of all the staff are taken and kept in the fingerprint reader right this must be the initial initial activity uh, all the fingerprints of the staff must be taken must be scanned and kept they are kept in the system okay so thereafter when someone puts uh, his or her finger that atm uh, sorry that fingerprint reader scans that uh, fingerprint and sends them inside you know inside of the fingerprint reader fingerprints are saved now that fingerprint reader uh, should check whether this scanned fingerprint matches to anything which are which are kept inside have you understood i'm i'm describing the function of a fingerprint reader then only you can understand because some of you know them some of you don't know them that's why i'm explaining i repeat it so once all the fingerprints are kept in this in the system thereafter when someone puts the finger the fingerprint is taken is scanned and sent into the system into the fingerprint reader so inside of the fingerprint reader there is a process taken place what is it it should it should check whether this fingerprint the newly scanned fingerprint matches to any existing fingerprints if an existing fingerprint matches right now it registers the time because that existing fingerprint is there with the name of that particular staff or maybe a number with the particular staff right so definitely if if it is match if it is matched the time of arrival or time of departure is entered if it is doesn't match you can uh, i mean uh, see some uh, messages on the screen like uh, check again uh, later or i mean uh, invalid fingerprint so you can uh, have such words right so now okay fingerprint is there so once the fingerprint is taken the process must be verifying the fingerprint which means checking whether any existing fingerprint matches to this scanned fingerprint you don't need to write the whole sentence just write verifying the fingerprint that's enough for exam so that's enough for uh, process but as a student you should know that that particular line right verifying the fingerprint means checking whether any existing fingerprint uh, suits or matches to this fingerprint right that is the process so i simply write verify fingerprint right that may be the only uh, only process uh, need to be performed right so that happens inside of the fingerprint reader as a result of this process output found right you will have output so what about the output of a fingerprint reader message will be received by fingerprint okay any other any other things time that arrival sorry and departure time yes. that okay. arrival okay. and departure right. so the main output is that the time right entering or registering the arrival time or departure time yes you can you can have some messages on the screen like uh, right uh, as i mentioned earlier sometimes if it is wrong it shows like uh, invalid fingerprint or try again later so you can have sometimes uh, it may be say that it is it has been done it is fine so you can have some messages but don't give priorities those messages because the main reason more main uh, i mean a need for having the fingerprint reader is taking the attendance so if it is uh, verified definitely you can say that uh, it is uh, the time to be entered right arrival time or departure departure time so i can say that uh, register uh, arrival or departure time right arrival or departure time that may be the output even you you may argue that if it is invalid we have some messages right that is possible but a uh, thing in a positive way so we have such outputs so fingerprint reader also one of the 
uh, one of the systems because it has inputs process and output got it so every system has right as uh, elements inputs process output these are the three elements found in in all the system whether it is a human being or whether it is a school or even school also a system right so you don't think that school is an organization and that can't be considered as a system even school is a system because think about a school so if it is a school it has components like teachers principals right uh, students uh, funds resources all these are components these components work together to perform a task or achieve a goal so you know uh, teaching and learning it may be a task to perform that particular task the components in the school should work together a principal cannot work alone teachers cannot work alone so you know there is a uh, there is a unit i mean a group work right there should be a group work going on definitely school is a system so don't think that system is limited to a small small uh, i mean device or equipment it beyond that right it may be human being it may be some devices school so when it comes to system you need to check whether it has the ability to fulfill a task whether it has components and whether they work together so if that happens definitely it is a system okay right so i need uh, look i need uh, uh, some examples uh, more example for uh, identifying the inputs process and output uh, for the for the system but before that i tell i take one thing because i forget to mention that that is also related with data and information but i i forget that uh, that's why i didn't explain but let me take that first and thereafter we will take one or two examples uh, more examples uh, about systems for identifying the process input and uh, output right so this time we will have to take one more heading which is related to data and information that is uh, characteristics of a good information right or features of a good information so as we all know when data are processed they become information right there is no doubt everyone knows right if you process the data definitely you need to uh, so you have information but you can't say that the information that you obtain is good all the time right so you process the data and you got the information but the information that you receive can't be good or can't be the the best one all the time sometimes the information is very meaningful and also very good sometimes it can't be so what i'm trying but i'm trying to tell you is right when the data are processed you can't say that the information is always the good one right sometimes it's good sometimes it's not good so how to identify whether it is a good information or whether it is not good information you need to take some parameters so you need to take some factors okay so he so we have to discuss about the features right of a good information characteristics of a good information so we don't have enough time but let me take one or two characteristics first right the first characteristic uh, the heading is features huh? features of a good information So let me take the first uh, feature. If it is a good information, it should arrive on time. Repeat it. The good information should arrive on time, just on time. What does it mean? We already discussed that information is for decision making. Or even some of you have mentioned that information is for fulfilling a requirement. Of course, right, right. so you need an information for a requirement so 
that that particular information should be produced or should arrive on that particular time because you need you have that particular need so definitely that that information is there on that time if it arrives late definitely it is useless it would be easy if i take simple example look here uh, take a look at the weather report we already discussed the weather report right weather report is information you know today's weather report should be issued maybe early morning today maybe the midnight right yesterday's night or something late night right because you know today the, the day starts from uh, 12 uh, night right so early morning so today's weather report should be needed for all the people uh, in, in 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 the dawn of the time right maybe very early morning so assume the the weather report is issued maybe uh, 12 noon today's weather report is issued at 12 noon you know 12 hours passed so now what happens the, the the half day almost half day gone so now that weather report doesn't have much importance nobody wants to see that right 12 hours gone i mean uh, fishermen went to sea farmers went to uh, farm i mean uh, paddy fields or gardens uh, the other workers went to their work so if some disasters are there you know everything is happened everything gone so the, the weather report arrives at 12 o'clock, doesn't prevent anything. So it is useless, right? We don't want that. Maybe it may be useful for the remaining 12 hours. That may be okay. But you can't say that the weather report is good as it is intended. So that is the point which I'm making here. If it is a good information, it must arrive on time. Simply we call that as timeliness. Right, timeliness, which means that particular information should be created or should be formed or should arrive on the particular time. Here, time means the time of the requirement, right? We have a requirement, so that on that time it must arrive. Even see, we discussed about that cake, right? So we need a cake for a requirement, like a farewell or maybe a birthday party. So that is the requirement, that is the need. So your cake must be available on that particular time. What happens if the cake comes after at the end of the uh, I mean uh, birthday party? It is meaningless, right? So that is the first one. It must be uh, available on time. Even uh, take a look at your progress report. The progress report is uh, is issued by your school for evaluating your academic achievements at the end of every term. Your parents, your teachers, your school, even yourself wants to evaluate your academic ach achievement at the end of every term. So the, the progress report must be issued at the end of each term. So what happens if that progressive report is issued late? Maybe your school issues that progressive report of this term, right? The third term, uh, maybe in 2021, March or something. Now, can you say that the progressive report issued in March 2021 can evaluate yourself perfectly? No, because that, that report ha is having the fact about the third term. But that will be issued in March. So between this December, uh, from December to March, you know, things can change. You can improve yourself. Some of you learn hard and, and uh, improve yourself. Some of you may be weakened. So how can you say that the, uh, the report uh, given in March 2021 shows you exact talent? That never happens. But the progressive report, which is given at the end of this term, uh, can can uh, show the fact about your academic achievement by by using that progressive report we can evaluate you so that must be the point okay so this is the first point to be considered when it is a good information or not uh, having on time right timeliness so it has some other other characteristics too so you have to check the other characteristics then only you can decide whether it is a good information or not right so I will explain them uh, tomorrow. 
so any any doubts if you have any doubts uh, you can ask me now right so it's enough since you don't have any questions so it's enough for today so again uh, spend some time at your home right and have a look at these things again and understand the fact so we will uh, meet with another uh, we will meet with another uh, things right so it's enough thank you